And happy uh, uh, happy Thanksgiving for yesterday for, to everybody. I hope you had a really wicked one. Um, and uh, of course, we'll have a great presentation for you today uh, about pinpointing profitable trades in an uncertain market on this special Black Friday event. Uh, it is it's quite funny actually. That Jeanette gave me that introduction because I, I just threw two slides into my presentation to tell you a little bit of a bit of a funny story about this morning. And Jeanette would have probably killed me if she'd known what I was going through. But uh, this is actually where I'm at. <laughs> I took a photo of that. This this morning um they, we they have internet there is that what you're saying they do or don't have did you have to go 15 miles away to get internet are you up in a tree that's what i really we, wanted to know. We, we checked into the cabin last night i said look i, I hope i'm not going to make too much noise if anyone's nearby because i have a, a big workshop tomorrow she said well there's no wi-fi and i'm like oh god <laughs> so, I, I, planner. <laughs> so i so i loaded up so i loaded up my cell phone of course my cell phone has a great hot spot i'm, I'm working off my cell phone instead um but uh, then i went out this morning to uh, to get my laptop um and set everything up uh, about 5 a.m this morning and uh, and i realized that i left my laptop in the car and it was negative 25 degrees centigrade outside which is very cold um and uh, uh <laughs> and my laptop wouldn't turn on for an hour so i had to put it next to the fireplace until it finally turned on about 20 minutes ago. So uh, these are all <laughs> scary things. You're right. I should not. I wish I'd gotten and walked away before I heard this crap. <laughs> the good news is that uh, you got that fire going and it took care of it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna let you use your hotspot. Hopefully you have enough power. In one hour. We're all, we're all good. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, the uh, the interesting things you come across when traveling while trading. But gotcha. uh, guys. Guys, we'll start out with a disclaimer. Uh, welcome, everybody. Again, this is for educational purposes only. We're going to be talking about a lot of trades that we're in right now. But again, it's not a recommendation to buy or sell them or that it's suitable for your risk requirements. And trading does involve risk of anything you invest. Um, Real quick introduction. Many of you probably know us already. I see a lot of familiar faces in the room. Um, you know, we're all about systems. Uh, I, I, I got into trading when I was 14. Uh, I was in an economics class back in Australia and the teacher said, all right, for the next six months, you're going to bring in, we're going to bring in the newspaper, you're going to pick your favorite stocks and you're going to graph them with a 2B pencil on, on that grid paper. If you remember those 2B pencils and, um, and we did that and the, and the prize was uh, $500 for the best the students with the best portfolio in the class. And, um, and uh, that was probably the best money I ever made as a 14 year old and and I was hooked to the stock market um, already interested I should say uh, then a few years later um, just before I graduated I was uh, traveling in in Europe with my father and mother and sister and uh, we were sitting in a little local pub and uh, this guy was uh, kind of an elderly guy sitting there tapping away on his keyboard and entranced in the screen uh, at the table next to us and uh, uh, anyway he ended up we ended up chatting and, and talking to this table who's sitting right next to us and asked him what he was doing and uh, he said he was trading stocks and the, the guy turned out to be a retired engineer well he was forced into retirement because he got fired <laughs> uh, his job his company shut down he didn't have a job anymore and he'd gotten into trading and for the last 10 years he had traveled to uh, 40 different countries and had been trading all around the world and uh, and he, he told, told us his story and, and and that was I guess with the final nail in the coffin uh, I knew I wanted to be for the rest of my life and I gave up a uh, degree in law I left that I was also going to become a fighter pilot with the Australian Air Force gave that up and I, I pursued a career in trading and it's all I've done now since I, I've been 18 years old well officially so uh, that's what attracts me to trading uh, the thing that attracts me to trading is the ability to be anywhere uh, doing doing whatever you want, and as long as you've got a laptop and a and a, and a hotspot, I should say, you don't even need Wi-Fi, I guess. Yeah, as long as you've got a cell phone and a laptop and power, I mean, you can do this from anywhere in the world. And so that's the first thing that really attracts uh, trading to me, uh, or me to trading. And the other the other thing is that it's it's truly a wonderful business which is highly liquid not like real estate you can't sell half your house it's, it's completely liquid you're in complete control of it and it really is it should be about your money working for you so to me 
Everything we're going to talk about today is, a, is about strategies that allow us to do just that, allow us to deploy our capital and based on the strategy we put it to work with, it makes us money in the background while we get to do whatever we want with our time versus say uh, full-time day trading, which is really just a job because you're still exchanging time for money. Um, whereas I only spend, you know, a couple of hours a week and about say 10, 15 minutes a night updating my stop losses. That's it. I don't have to put any more time in that, and the money, um, uh, and the money is made in the back in the back end. So strategies are very important to do this. You need to have rules. You need to have consistent structures, and you need to have, uh, and you need to know exactly, you know, why you're buying, where you're buying, where you would sell, all of this before you even end up uh, taking the trade. Now, um, uh, what I want to start out with today is just a little quick uh, look at where the, the market currently is at, because we are in a, a uh, in a market that's just going higher and higher and higher. Um, we've obviously got to uh, to recognise that there are some risks in the background, although right now, um, you know, things are still pushing higher, so we're going to enjoy that while it lasts. But um, at at some, but basically, some point, we are we're already kind of getting into that zone where the weak stocks are starting to fall. So um, the stocks that uh, uh, the weaker ones, the rotten apples in the tree, those are the ones that drop first. And um, uh, this is kind of one of the reasons we've been pushed into this very inflated market by monetary policy, cheap interest rates. Um, and uh, whenever we've been in these levels for the last hundred years, we've always dropped. We've always had a major crash um, from these levels. So uh, I'm not saying this to say, look, the market's going to crash tomorrow. In fact, as of the, the moment we're speaking right now, I have to, uh, close to about 30 long positions. So um, right now the market's still bullish and, we get, and we're gonna stay long until it gives us that signal. Uh, but we do have to be aware of the risks behind it. Um, and when you look at the insiders, the insiders are one of the best ways to understand the truth. Because in, in this, as I'm sure you will all agree, in the stock market, in, in, in anything financial related, I mean, it's very, very hard to find the truth and uh, and I don't believe 90% of what I hear in this industry um, it's like you know you, you sit there watching TV half of its garbage uh, there's even a, a documentary done on on the theory of experts and I, of course I'm the uh, the pot calling the kettle black here but uh, they, they watched uh, they followed the, the popular TV channels and things and found that uh, over a period of a year 90% uh, of the financial advice that was given on television lost money so I mean how's that for the uh, for statistics how's that for probability you know you listen to someone else's advice on the the, the talking heads on television and you got a 90 percent probability of losing money so I, I like to just cut through all the crap so to speak i mean excuse my french but uh, let's go straight to the heart of the issue let's let's look at the truth and the only real way you ever get to the truth is is to ask what are you doing with your own money right uh, just like our trading alerts, you know, I wouldn't send you a trade alert that I wouldn't be buying myself or am already buying myself, right? Uh, in terms of when we look at uh, trades to invest in or what the market conditions are, let's turn off the news, let's turn off the the blah that is that is being put out there to suck you into doing the wrong thing and let's look at where the real money is going. And when we look at the insiders, Despite what they say in the news, despite what they say on their earnings calls, what are they doing with their money? And when we start to see that 90 over the last three month period, insider selling is kind of you know, in technology sector alone is four uh, four point two billion dollars. Uh, services sector two point seven five billion, uh, and there's hardly any buying. That shows you the level of of, uh, of of risk that the insiders who know are anticipating. Uh, when we go a step further and we look at last month, you can see that uh, um, it was kind of uh, even across the board, lots of selling in oil and gas, technology, services as well. But watch what happens when we go to the last 30 days. As the markets reach record highs, watch what happens to this chart. We go from the most amount of selling a month ago at 650 million to the last 30 days. Look at that huge selling okay so you know when if i'm going to invest in a stock you know the 
one of the things that we're going to be talking about today is you know, the, the criteria we go through. But um, when I start to see this heavy, heavy, heavy level of insider selling, um, this obviously tells us that there is, uh, this confirms the heightened level of risk of not necessarily whether it's going to plummet tomorrow, but how much potential upside there is versus potential downside. And that's what we're seeing reflected in this mass selling from the insiders across the board in every sector. Um, the the other concern here is that when we come to a and I don't think it's a matter of if I think it's a matter of when when we get a um, a, a correction it may not be an all-out crash but it certainly could be nasty. Uh, this is fueled by the debt. Uh, this is this is obviously the big problem. The big elephant in the room is that there is uh, this is all fueled. We, the reason we're this high is because of the amount of easy money and cheap money. And uh, when the banks are making so little money to lend it out, in fact, in some cases, negative interest rates, right, um, the credit starts to tighten. They start to say, look, we can't afford to lend this money out this cheap. Uh, we're not making enough. We can't, aff if you don't pay your loan back, and if, uh, then, you know, we're in trouble. So, um, uh, they st credit starts to tighten. The credit starts to tighten. Companies start to find it difficult to borrow. Consumer credit contracts, and the fallout is automotives, consumer goods, and oil explorers. And for any of you who've been following these sectors, you'll notice that automotives, consumer goods, and oil explorers and services have been the three of the weakest sectors. Um, just take a look at uh, at um, gosh, take a look at Ford, right? Ford's just been going down, 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 down. Take a look at General Motors, right? Tell me that looks like a bullish chart to you, right? So we're already seeing these red flags that we look out for as indicators of trouble. And um, the this I want to just press upon the importance of, of the size of the problem because the, it's not just a little bit of debt. Um, we have more unsecured debt in the economy right now that's been borrowed out to speculate in the market uh, than we have since 1960. So more unsecured debt than the housing crisis, more unsecured debt and bubble than the dot-com scenario. Um, in fact, the IMF estimates that the amount of corporate debt at risk of default, remember that big bankruptcy word, the amount of corporate debt at risk of default is um, uh, is it is 19 trillion dollars now that number just this is just the amount that's at risk of bankruptcy that number is equivalent to 40 percent of the total debt of eight major economies <laughs> that's how bad that's how bad the downturn could be. Now, it may not happen tomorrow, but again, this could be something that isn't so far out. We could be looking, um, it, it could happen this year. I think that it's more likely something we're looking into uh, February, March of next year. But we're already starting to see the weak companies drop. So when the S&P turns down, isn't necessarily when the crash begins, it actually starts months before. And that's why I want to then talk about um, how we then tap into this as an incredible opportunity. So there's two things we need to do here. We obviously need to, A, uh, make sure if we are going to stay long in certain positions or if we're going to take long positions while the S&P continues to go up, those positions need to be damn good. They need to be perfect. That You need to be checking every single box of the ingredients that makes a perfect storm uh, for a long. In the same sense, uh, we also need to be beginning now to look for where the really good opportunities are to take advantage of the market drop when it happens. Um, and uh, uh, so we need to then weed out those individually very good shorting opportunities that uh, are already starting to, uh, have already topped out. So um, the messaging here 
is that it's it's not just a stock market that we're thinking of. We have to think of the market of individual companies. And this indicator that I'm going to show you now is fantastic mm -hmm. at this. Now, this is one of three indicators that we use to um, to to give you a weekly checklist. So in other words, when you sit down right now, for example, this afternoon or over the weekend and say, hey, I'm going to look for the best stock to buy tomorrow on Monday or the, the or the best stock to short on Monday um, you know what direction do I think the market's going to go this indicator is something that we use to determine that so firstly we have to get away from the idea of talking about the stock market because there's no such thing it, it's not a stock market it is a market of individual stocks and so if you look at the 2015 crash if we were to look at the stock market as, as we often do um, uh, as the S&P, you can see that the stock market went from uh, April to uh, all the way through to August, it went sideways. Can everyone see that? Nothing happened in the stock market till August 19th. All right, it just went absolutely sideways. Now, um, the market then recovered all of its losses uh, into um, into November, December, and then on December 29th, we crashed 13%. Okay, December 29th, August 19th, those are the two days where we had this unexpected, so to speak, crash. But was it unexpected, or more importantly, was it unpredictable? No. Uh, for those of you who followed Acorn for a while, uh, over the last 12 years we've been in business, we haven't missed one single correction. And that's one of the, I mean, trading aside, one of the things that I'm proudest of about our organization and what the, the systems we've developed is we have never lost money in a single downturn. Uh, we have protected our longs and in, in many cases actually then profited from the shorts by taking our longs and taking our profits and switching into a bearish position. And one of the very important parts of the recipe that we've been able that we've used to predict these major turning points is this indicator. So in 2015, look at what it said. As the S and P 500 went sideways, didn't drop, uh, make any new lows. Look at what individual stocks did. This this indicator shows you the percentage of stocks that are above or below their 50-day moving average. Okay, so what that means is that in April, 70% of stocks were above their 50-day moving average, being a critical level of support, a very strong indication of smart money buying. Uh, this is where hedge funds buy, mutual funds, uh, you know, all of that kind of uh, um, uh, smart money, big money. Uh, now, if the stock falls below its 50, it means that it's lost that institutional support, it's lost that smart money support. Um, they haven't bought it as it pulled back. They've 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 not, or they've just simply, or they've maybe even sold. So when we see stocks falling below that level, it's it's something you need to be aware of. Uh, in 2015, the amount of stocks above that 50 declined from 70% to 34, well before the decline of the S&P. Okay, so when we saw this at 70% and declining. This was a um, uh, this was the time to start looking for great shorts and protecting your longs. Now remember, the market recovered, and as we can see, so did stocks above or below the 50-day moving average. We were back up to 70% in October. Now the S&P didn't crash again at 13% until December 29th. But look at where this indicator was. We were already down to 24% weeks before the S&P began to decline. Right. So this is a very, very valuable tool because it, it, it gives us a predictor of showing the divergence between what the real market's doing versus the manipulated and weighted index. So same thing in 2018. We crashed in February, straight down. It was titled as chaotic, unpredictable. Uh, October, right? We rallied all the way up to here in October. 
uh, reached market reached all time record highs. Sound familiar? Everyone bought as the market broke over its 2800 resistance, right? 2860 resistance. Everyone loaded up only to find weeks later it dove all the way down and lost 500, 600 points. Uh, again, this was predictable and the smart money knew it. And that's why you see. When you go and look at the indicator, look what happened here. Again, the crash of February, look at where individual stocks once again got up to in early January. We were up to 72, 74%. And this started declining before the market dropped. Look at the crash of October. Where were we in June, June, July? Back at 70%. And by the time the S&P dropped, we had already declined from 70% once again to 34. Is, is everyone following along? Because this is really cool stuff. It took me years and years to figure this out and, and to come and find this indicator. And the funny thing about it is that there's lots of stuff out there like this that are that are simple and so powerful. And here it is, right? We, we load ourselves up with all these indicators, all these software programs we buy, all this stuff. But I mean, one of the most important questions we always need to answer for ourselves in our trading portfolios, should I be going long? Should I be going short? How do I time that? And here's an indicator that in the last 12 years has never been wrong, ever. It's 100% accurate. So what happens here is whenever we get to 70%, the way we use this is whenever we get to 70% or above, 80% of the time in the last 12 years, the market reverses one week later. One week. So whenever you hit, see this around 70%, basically start a countdown timer and know you've got um, an 80% probability that within a week, things are going to turn. Now, the other 20% of the time, that it uh, doesn't happen that quickly, it never lasts more than four weeks. So to put that in layman's terms, in terms of the effectiveness of the indicator, 100% of the time in the last 12 years, whenever we get to 70% or above, the market lasts no longer than four weeks at those levels until a downturn begins. This is very, very valuable stuff to know for your trading because this is going to allow you to know to, 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 to gauge when you want to get bullish, how bullish you want to be, how you you know how many positions you want to have open, etc. And if you look at the um, the most recent market conditions, take a look at this. Okay, take a look at this. Now on the spy, let's look at the spy. What happened on the spy? On the spy, we hit. In, on Friday, September 20th, or excuse me, Thursday, September 19th, we began that downturn, right? We began that downturn. So on that day, let's have a look at what the indicator was saying to us. Look at where we were just days before. On Friday, September 13th, a week before, one week before, we hit 70%. Now, we had, at that point, we had 24 long positions in our portfolio, in our Acorn fund. Um, and uh, this was a, a high probability sell signal. And we sent an alert out to all of our students and we said, we are selling everything and we're going short. So not only did we protect all of our capital, not only did we sell most of our longs very close to their uh, their highs, but we were then able to use that money to then double down and make uh, 10, 15, 20% on the way down over the following two weeks. This indicator was a very simple, very powerful way that we were able to anticipate that. So um, this is something you want to uh, you want to watch. Make sense, everybody? Yes, John, this is going to be very valuable for swing trading. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so the takeaway so far is markets are at dangerous highs. That doesn't mean they're going to crash tomorrow, but what it means is that we need to have an edge, that if we're going to go long, 
these longs need to be, well, firstly, we need to understand how to look at the market, that it's not just the S&P we need to be concerned about, it's what individual stocks are doing and watching that indicator closely for when we are going to get to another, the next turning point, okay? Um, the second thing in from that is that as we then go about selecting our trades long or short, we need to make sure that because of the risk in the market that we are insulating ourselves from that um, by buying only the very, very, very best trades. Now, this is something we should be doing always. I mean, other, you know, sometimes you get such strong markets that you can pretty much buy anything and it'll go up. That's lazy trading. It's easy trading, but it's lazy. I mean, in, in this kind of scenario, it's we, we can't be lazy. We have to look for the very, very best. We need to have rules in place so we don't get burnt and so we can take advantage of this great opportunity. And this is where we start getting into my my favorite strategy, which is um, looking at uh, smart money and looking at the rules of it, okay? Um, most people don't make money, not because they're ill-educated, but because they don't have rules and therefore find it very difficult to take action. Um, most people then sit in front of their screen all day long. The amount of time I've, I've heard some people spend in, in, on trading is uh, just blows me away, right? Um, most people, when they when they see the performance that we get in our portfolio, think that you know we must be spending hours and hours now. Like at dinner last night, the gentleman at the restaurant said, um, you know, what do you do and why are you why are you so concerned about the Wi-Fi? <laughs> and I was talking about the uh, um, trading, and he said um, we got into chatting. He was in, he was actually turned out to be an ex fund manager, and. Um, we talked for great length and he asked me kind of what our annual results were and I told him how the last 12 month period we'd done 140% on our portfolio um, uh, and he said well you oh geez well you must be spending a lot of time doing this then that's uh, that's um, you know I'm just a I'm now kind of a more longer term investor I just look at it a couple of hours a week so again that's that's the assumption that people have when you when, to do well in trading you need to spend a lot of time working at it but work is exactly what we're trying to get away from in trading. I'm trying to work less. I'm trying to live more. I'm trying to get my money to work for me. That is what I thought investing was all about, right? Um, so for me, if I'm going to trade a strategy, and the strategies we're going to show you now are all based on the set and forget mentality where we can pre-program our entries, pre-program our exits, pre-program our stop loss, all of the rules of the trade while um, at night, while the market is closed, and then let them go. And then all we need to do along the way between the entry and the exit is just update the stop loss. We never have to decide when we're going to sell. We're never going to allow ourselves to get drawn into emotional charge decisions. We're going to allow the strategy to do that work for us by having one in the first place and then setting those rules up ahead of time. Okay. And that's when you really can get into away from the job of trading and, and start enjoying what uh, some of the benefits really are where you can work from anywhere, again, as long as your hotspot's working. <laughs> um, yeah, again, that's a screenshot of some of our results. We won't go deeply into that, but as you can see, this was actually a model portfolio we started in uh, October of last year, um, when just before the market crashed, um, we funded it and traded it for, uh, well, it's about 12 months now, but um, yeah, I mean, we've averaged 9.69% a month uh, on mostly stocks and some options or a few options. Uh, the, the, I'm not too, I don't want to kind of advertise 140% too much it's because, because that's not the thing that's most important about this. It's the consistency. It's, it's, it's not like 100% one month and negative 40 the next. It's making that consistent return every single month in uncertain markets. And the way we do that is by having rules. So most traders trade emotionally, right? They are, they are sucked into the, the, the stories, the news, the emotions of the market. Um, and because they have no very, very, very strict rules of how they trade, it's easy to get off track.
And, and keep in mind, that is exactly what the system wants you to do. The system needs you to lose, right? If I've got a billion dollars worth of stock XYZ and I'm an insider and I need to sell it, my billion dollars worth, right? What do I need? If I think this is the top of the market and the stock's not going to go any higher, and in fact, maybe it's about to crash 30%, 40%. If I'm going to sell my billion dollars worth of stock, what do I need? I need a billion dollars worth of buyers. I need a billion dollars worth of people who think this is the best time to buy. So the system is, is just not engineered to help you because the people that are behind the system are there to make money and they only make money if someone else is willing to buy the stock off them at a, at a price that they feel it's not going to go higher then. So, I mean, the system is engineered to constantly keep you feeling scared, right? I mean, banks, uh, fund managers, you name it. I mean, they're not all bad, but I mean, just keep in mind that they their job is to get your money. They want they want to charge you fees. Um, they want to charge you uh, percentages of your portfolio. Um, and the way they do that is to scare you to say, look, this is a terrible, terrifying market. Um, you can't do this yourself. You need to give it to us, or you need to buy this, um, you know, twenty thousand dollar trading software, or you need to do this, or you need to do that. The whole system is designed to scare you because that's how they part you with your money. That's the job. They do it very, very well, don't they? The, the surprising truth, though, is, again, when you start to dig behind all of this messaging and all of this fear tactics to, to sell papers and to scare you, there's, there's a very much simpler, much more powerful way to, to, to make money that, that they, they don't want you to know about. They don't want people like me telling you something like the stocks above or below the 50-day moving average that's free and has never been wrong. So when we start tapping into this easier way, the KISS principle, keep it simple, you know, um, we start to, the two things that I've narrowed my trading strategy down to over the last 20 years is, is focusing on where is the smart money going, right? So we do that from a market perspective. I showed you one of the three indicators we use earlier. Um, and then down to a stock perspective, from a stock um, standpoint. And the two things we want to consider when we're analyzing the stock is the pattern and then the smart money. So let's now drill down into this. The pattern is very important. It's the first thing that we need to determine before we consider buying a trade, okay? Because uh, JP Morgan estimates that 90% of the volume in the market day to day comes from high frequency trading or algorithms. Okay. Um, it's not just day trading, by the way, it's, it's, it's uh, swing trading, position trading, investing. Uh, in fact, 60% of globally managed money is also managed by similar algorithms. Now, when I say managed money, I don't mean your 401k or your RSP if you're in Canada or your superannuation fund if you're in Australia or whatever the global equivalents may be. We don't get access to these kinds of funds. This is this is big money funds where you know you normally have to have at least a million dollars before the fund will even even talk to you, let alone accept your money. This is this is the smart money, big funny, big money stuff. That's what we're talking about in that 60%. Um, and this is all based on patterns, you know. So, so they're preset algorithms as to where they buy and sell, and this is what accounts for 90% of the volume. So it's very, 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 very important that we understand what the pattern is on a chart because this is the, the, hot, the, the biggest clue or insight that's going to tell us what the markets, what that stock's going to do next, the best leading indicator. Okay, um, that's the first thing. So let's go and have a look at some of these uh, trade setups. Let's have a look firstly at uh, McDonald's. All right, so we've got um, we've got McDonald's up here on the chart. There we go. Let's take some of those that stuff off, which we don't need. Can everybody see what kind of uh, what kind of pattern we have here?
head and shoulders. Exactly. So if we're going to keep it simple and we look at this chart and we say, okay, what kind of pattern do we have? We have a head and shoulders pattern. Now, this means that if we're looking at all the volume in the market and the 90% of volume daily and the 60% of managed money and so forth, um, we now know the rules that that volume is going to flow through. So how do we trade a head and shoulders pattern? Well, the most aggressive trade, um, if we have a bearish market, is to short the stock when it rallies into the right shoulder. Now, look at the date here. Right, we're in September. Remember, on the 19th of September, our stock, our smart money indicator was at 70% and was telling us to go short. Remember, we looked at that before. In mid-September, uh, stocks above or below the 50-day moving average hit 70%. So that tells us to do what? It tells us to look for the best possible shorts. McDonald's had a beautiful head and shoulders. Now the head and shoulders is the number one highest probability pattern to predict a reversal in an upward market. So uh, we shorted it there. This is actually a, a, a real trade we did. We set this out to all of our students. And in fact, this was, as I mentioned earlier, pre-programmed three days before that if the stock rallied to this level to buy puts on it. So we ran our scan, we identified the trade, we pre-programmed the entry, exit, and stop loss all in on the options, and this was an automated trade from start to finish. We, uh, we bought puts as the stock rallied into 214. We had a stop loss just above 216, so we had $2 of risk, and our target was down here at 192, which as you can see is a, um, what is that, a um, $22 drop. So we have a, a better than a 10 to 1 risk to reward ratio, reward to risk ratio. If this trade wins, it pays for 20 losses. So now we have an excellent pattern and we have excellent risk reward ratio. Now, um, this trade obviously worked out very, very well. The stock plunged all the way down to our target and that ended up being a 300% cumulative um, profit over the two trades we had on on this okay but so that's the technicals that's the pattern this is the um, this is the first thing we look at but let's go one step further what about the fundamentals right what about the fundamentals of the of the stock what about all the other stuff that goes beyond just technical analysis well, I hate reading quarterly reports. I'm not good at it. I, I certainly don't want to sit there all day long looking at what the Fed Reserve is saying or trying or researching what the CEO is doing or whatever um, and, and what his background is like. I mean, I'm not a fundamentalist. I'm not an economist. I haven't spent 20 years getting my master's in XYZ degrees to have the the uh, uh, the credentials to, to be the a fundamental analyst of what McDonald's value is. But I know who is. I know who is qualified, the chief marketing officer, the chief accounting officer, the CFO, um, general counsel, the president of international operating markets, uh, the president of McDonald's USA. I'd say they're qualified. I would hope that they have some idea of their own company's value and fundamentals. So why, why am I going to compete with that? Why am I going to try and outsmart the insiders and outsmart the algorithms? Why? There's no real reward for it because they're telling us right here what they're doing with their own money, the real truth that we're looking for, beyond the blah, if I can coin that phrase. Huge amounts of selling right before the stock took a little nosedive, okay? Now, the interesting thing about this stock is when we shorted it and bought those puts, it was in fact the day they announced they were going to be selling Beyond Meat Burgers. And so everyone thought I was nuts because they said, but what about the news? What about the news? This just goes, goes to show that if you've got a, if you've got 90% of the volume shorting this or driving it down, because that's the algorithm, that's where 90% of the volume is doing, it's impossible to fight that power. So this is this is the most important thing. But um, the other part 
to that is on the topic of Beyond Meats, this was actually another alert we also sent out. Check out Beyond Meats. All right, what pattern do we have? We have a pennant formation. The pennant formation, uh, you can see it was coming down from a, a high, driving down, formed the pennant. So the probability here is that this is going to drop lower and it's going to drop down to 110 or more. So again, easy trade. We waited for this to break out and there you get your entry, you get your exits and you get your stop loss, allowing it to be pre-programmable. Um, this dropped all the way down to 110. Um, easy money. And once more, let's pick up the phone and ask what the insiders are doing. Just, just think about that for a moment. Think about if every single trade you did from now on, you were able, before you pulled the trigger, to call the CEO of that company and say, hey, Bob, I was thinking of buying your stock. Just wondering what you think. And Bob and Bob's answer was, oh, you know, Jimmy, I uh, am a little worried about stuff. Um, you know, I think with the price is going to be going lower. In, as a matter of fact, Jimmy, I'm, I'm thinking of actually selling 100% of my stock that I own in my own company tomorrow. What would you do? Would you ignore Bob's advice? Would you ignore the fact that Bob's selling 100% of his stock? If you could call the CEO directly and that's what he said to you, would you still buy that stock? Anyone? Would anyone in the audience buy that stock if you were able to have that phone call? Right. No, you wouldn't. But many people do. Look at this, right? What happened here? 100% sale, 100% sale. Two insiders dumped everything they owned at 160 bucks. The CFO also sold, the chief growth officer sold, the director, the chief executive officer and president sold. Um, it was, a, it was a, everyone sold. And, and two of them were 100%. At 160 bucks, the stock then went all the way down to 75. Okay, do you know how many people though ignored this? How many people ignored the pennant? ignored the insiders just on the, the day after they sold the day after they sold we had close to a billion dollars worth of buying it was 800 million dollars worth of people bought beyond meats just on that one day alone and the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day billions of dollars of people start saying this thing's going up when the insiders are selling their own shares to them so this is kind of what gets me so excited about this because it tells me one of two things. Either well, one of three things. Either people don't understand the pattern, so they're, they're, they're going into a trade not knowing what the 90% of the volume is about to do. If you don't understand the pattern, you are going against the grain. You are unnecessarily putting yourself behind the black ball. Or secondly, they don't understand the inside of uh, uh, information or how to interpret it or how to access it. Both of these things are very easy to learn, right? So there's no real excuse to not know these things. And that's, and that's why we're teaching it today. Um, or third, they've just ignored it, right? Which is, which, is, <laughs> which is hard to do. If you're going to go about your portfolio hoping that you are, you, you're going to go against the market makers, against the insiders, um, because you figured something else out that no one else knows, that is a hard strategy to be consistently good at, right? So there's so many examples of these. GoDaddy, I mean, TRMB, TRMB, look at this one. You had mass exodus to V. Vice President, 100%, 21%, 41%, 18%, 28%, 50%, 38%. I mean, everyone who had a, a three-letter designation after their title sold uh, on TRMB, mass selling. So what did we do? Well, we're not going to fight them. We're going we're gonna to follow the money. We're going to follow the smart money. We're going to follow the breadcrumbs, and we're going to short it too. Um, oops. Again, ha have a look at that. There, there's your head and shoulders. There's your beautiful little head and shoulders. And that is your entry point, either there or there, where we entered it. Thing plummeted from uh, $45 all the way down to $37.50. Easy money, money on the options. Well, I think it was a 250% gain over a week. 
Easy money. The technicals told us, the, and the insiders themselves told us. And, and, and if you ask me, and I, I, again, I'm, I'm a pretty excited guy. I love this stuff. I really do. I mean, there is, there is no, there is, there's only one trade here. If you know these things, the only trade is to short it. Everyone going long and on any of these days is wrong, right? I, I strongly believe that, that there is no reason you would go long when you clearly have a head and shoulders and you have the insiders selling. Now, does it work out every single time? No, nothing is 100% except that indicator I showed you earlier, but nothing is 100%. Um, sometimes it goes the other way, but you know the majority of the time it does go your way and it goes down significantly. And if your investment strategy is to hope that the rules don't work and you get lucky, again, that is not a consistent strategy that w will work long term either. You know, it's just like in Vegas. We just, we a lot of the speakers here, we were all at Vegas in the Traders Convention a couple of weeks ago. My girlfriend, she loves blackjack. She sat down at the uh, blackjack table, the dealer pulled out a six. Um, she got a king. And I said to her, oh, babe, what's, what, are, what are you going to do? And she says, well, I'm going to double down. I'm going to bet, I'm going to double my money on my king. And I said, well, why would you do that? And she said, well, statistically, the dealer is going to uh, have too many cards. If a dealer has a six, they're going to bust. And statistically, because I have a king, I'm likely to get a, another king or a 10 or a queen or an ace, and I'm going to win twice as much. So I'm doubling my bet. I'm like, well, okay, that's the rules. And the dealer nodded at me. She said, that is what the house would uh, suggest you do. And I'm like, okay. Sure enough, the dealer busted and she got uh, 20. So she doubled her money. That's what, when we're trading, we have to approach trading with, with the same uh, respect of the rules and probabilities of how we put probability in our favor to make money. Now, I think we've got 14 minutes left, 13 minutes left actually. So we'll go into, I want to show you a couple of longs and then we'll uh, talk about our Black Friday offer. So these are the sh kinds of shorts we're looking for right now. Right, these are the kinds of shorts we're looking for right now and trading right now. On the long side, do we want to abandon those? Absolutely not. But as I said, we want to make sure if we're going into the longs that we're getting into really, really good ones. And uh, these are longs that uh, uh, most of these we are actually still holding right now. Look at HRTX. Okay, look at HRTX. Uh, actually, let me go over to the other my other platform for this because it's all charted up. Okay, so there's HRTX. Um, this is one that we bought at twenty two dollars. Right, I'll show you. Actually, I'll show you the alert. One second here, we'll go into our trading portal. This is what you'd have access to if you decide to join us at Acorn. Um, we'll go into HRTX, so we can go into our trading alerts. There we go, HRTX, November 6, 2019, long and call option. Momentum setup is the strategy. Entry signal $22.23, target is momentum. That's what dollar sign means. Stop loss is $23.93. Uh, you can see that we've been updating the notes uh, every single day almost with um, uh, uh, with how things are moving along. We suggested the uh, $22 March calls at $2.50 uh, on HRTX. Um, let's just have a quick look here. There we go, HRTX. March. $22 March calls. There we go. Yeah, they're currently at $5.30, up from $2.50. So 100% move already. Um, let's go and have a look at the, the setup. Have a look here. You've got massive buying, new buying, 30%, 40% um, uh, from all of the insiders all around the price of $18. Now let's look at the chart pattern. Okay. So there was our breakout. Right there as it broke out through the $22. So we had a perfect technical pattern. We had perfect insider buying. Uh, we have checked all of our boxes. 
And this is a momentum setup. This could actually continue going uh, even further. In fact, right now, you may notice that there's actually a flag formation forming right now. So um, we very likely could see this uh, break out even higher to around 2950. Again, we are holding that right now still. Uh, already made 100% uh, if you bought those options. Okay, let's look at uh, let's look at another one. KRTX. Look at this one. Uh, in July, the president and CEO decides for the first time in the history of CEO to buy. First time they've ever bought stock in their own company. Then comes a 10% owner in with $3.2 million. Then comes a director, ups his position by 68% for $11.2 million. All of this at 16 bucks. Okay, $16. What happened after? Weeks later, or just a little bit over that, stock goes from $16 to 150. So $1 million basically turns into 10. You think the insiders may have known a thing or two about what was going on? MYOV, this one we're still holding. Look at this, huge buying. You had eight different insiders, nine different insiders buy $160 million worth at $8.25 and around about $8.96 there, $9.10, but they loaded up $160 million worth of loading up. Um, here we go, this was our alert on it. I'll, put, I'll just show you on the screen. There we go, um, MYOV, our first alert, November 18th. Long momentum entry six dollars seventeen. First target seven ninety three. Second target momentum. We have a second alert to uh, buy at twelve seventy three, which we published on November twenty first. Stop loss eleven ninety three. Again, you can see the notes. You can even see the chart of what it looked like the day we alerted it. And then, if we click on play, we'll see what happened after. Bam all the way up to 19 bucks so far. And again, we are still holding that, um, both from a $6 alert and our 12.73 alert. That's easy money, very, very high probability pattern, huge insider buying. Um, I mean, VBIV, there you go, there's another one, huge insider buying, 153%, 77%, $10 dollars worth at 50 cents, right? This is actually one you can see right here in my portfolio right now, VBIV. We're up another $800 today. It's up almost 60, 70% since our entry. SVRA, another one. We're up $1,600 today. Uh, all of these are smart money buys. And that's the beautiful thing is when you start to get into these kind of scanning and strategies, you have the potential for these things to really just run. Um, and these are the last one I'll show you. We've got uh, seven minutes left. CNST. 248, look at that buying, $23 million worth at $8.50. They That's a huge buy, over doubling their position. Again, pick up the phone and say, hey, CEO, what would you think about your own company right now? Would you buy it? And they say, well, I don't know. I just bought $24 million worth myself yesterday. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. What happened after? Went from $8 currently to $48 and still trending, it still hasn't hit our stop loss, right? These are the kinds of trades I love because these are the kind of trades I can hold, I can pre-program, I just update my stop loss every couple of days and every day I'm waking up, I'm finding two or $3,000 more in my portfolio from just any one of these trades. And I'm not having to hunt for new ones every single day, they have this power, the great pattern, the great um, insider buying that just keep driving them further and further and further. And the beauty about it is it's not rocket science. We're using things that are just common sense, right? Follow the pattern, follow the insiders. And the beauty of it is that we're only, we're only having to spend a couple of hours a week to not only find the trades, but to execute them. So, in my time I have left, I want to talk about how you can join us because, you know, I, I really feel that no matter what you trade, whether you're trading uh, um, Bollinger Bands or um, Ichimoku or or whether you're an options trader or a stock trader, no matter what, this is a fundamental piece to add to your your strategies. For me, it's my entire 
uh, approach. But um, this is a very valuable piece you can add. And so we put together a, a special Black Friday offer that's going to give you access to all of it. Both the indicators, our smart money indicators, the scans for how to find every single stock I've showed you today, um, as well as three months access to every trade we do for the next three months, uh, video alerts, text alerts, access to our customer portal, everything for $397. Um, I'll run through that. And if you have any questions, you can throw them now into the chat box. But um, yeah, lesson module one, you're going to get access to the uh, customer, the, the indicators. So I showed you the um, stocks above or below the 50 day moving average. Um, that's, uh, that's awesome. That comes with a standalone module on how to use that, how to trade that. Uh, we also have an indicator on the SPY. Okay, now uh, our indicator on the SPY is uh, the, the most powerful system I've ever developed. It's, a, it's an indicator that works only for the S&P 500. It doesn't work on any other stock, but uh, this gives us two signals a month. And um, over the last 1,440 alerts, uh, 1,440 signals, it is correct nine, just under 92% of the time. And there is nothing I know out there, whether it's stocks, futures, currencies, nothing. Nothing I know is 92% accurate, giving two signals a month like this. And this is this is for the entire S&P 500. So uh, this is part of the package. Um, you'll get that indicator for life. You'll get the um, stocks above or below the 50 day moving average indicator and lesson for life. Um, module two will then go into uh, teaching you the highest probability patterns that we are scanning for and trading. So you know which patterns to trade in which markets. And we don't want to talk about 15, 20 patterns. It's dialing it down to the, the several that are the best, like flags are awesome. Uh, channel breakouts, awesome, head and shoulders. We only want to trade the ones that are the best. You know, we only want, it's, it's like only having to bet when you know the dealer has a six. Only playing, only risking money when you know you have the highest probability of winning. That's what this is about. And, uh, and of course, this comes back to them being able to find those trades. So you will also have access for life for the insider buy, uh, insider scan for the longs and the insider scans for the shorts. Every single setup I've shown you today um, has come from those scans uh, and they are, again, they are, they're awesome, right? Um, you know, uh, we've got, uh, what was the, there was one other I was going to tell you about. Yeah, oh yeah, CLVS. I just, I can't believe this one. It's just, it just, just keeps going. <laughs> This is just huge, huge insider buying on it, and it, bro it came up on our scan back here on the uh, um, on the eighth of November as a buy at four bucks. It's now fourteen fifty one, and it just keeps going and going and going, and every day waking up to profits. I mean, that's the thing. Make your Black Friday green. Make today be the day where you start being able to tap into these because they're, they're long lasting, profitable trades with great momentum where, the, where, where you don't, where you can see the insiders are doing exactly what you want. Again, think of the value of picking up the phone and calling the CEO or the directors and asking them what you should do. That is the answer you get when you know how to tap into the insiders and how, more importantly, to then scan for the setups where they're a glaring buy. Um, so that's uh, that's the package here. Now, as I mentioned, we'll also be including um, three months of trade alerts here for you. So um, that's another pack. That's another part to the program as well. And um, I'll show you what that what that includes. There we go. Um, so you got one week video. So yeah. So every week we'll send you a video with all of our alerts, um, live text messages, entries, exits, stop losses. And twice a month, twice a week, we'll be doing live classes teaching you, um, teaching you exactly how we found them. So not only is it alerts, it also comes with ongoing education for three months where we practice the scans and find the new trades for you. So it's three months of alerts included with the 397. So um, here's a breakdown. You're getting the Smart Money Indicators Package, which is normally 297. 
the smart money scans, which are normally, and again, this is all for life for 397. We're also going to include a fast track one-on-one -on -one session. So if you're busy or, you, or you've got a lot of stuff on your mind between now and Christmas or after the new year, that's fine. We're going to give you a one-on-one -on -one session with our coach where we're going to load up everything for you, set you up, and then run a scan with you to pick out the best trades. So in that one session, you're off to the ground running um, using this immediately. So we're including a fast track one-on-one -on -one session, which is normally 400, three months of our premium alerts, which is normally 441. And we're going to be doing this whole course live. So on top of the on-demand lessons, we'll redo the course live twice um, and over the next few months, and you're going to get a pass for each of those live events, which are normally 397 each. Every time you attend the live events, we're including those in your package. So you're looking at a total value of 2129, which uh, again is only 397 for today only for Black Friday. And um, the amount of fast track spots we have because of our coaching availability will be limited to the first 40. So uh, take action on that uh, if that's going to be important to you. All right, I am out of time, guys and girls. Uh, I will, um, if you do, uh, uh, in terms of software programs, you don't need anything. We provide the platform, we provide everything. So whether you use TOS or NinjaTrader, this will work on everything because we provide the scanning software for you. You do not need anything at all. Um, uh, you can use TOS, NinjaTrader, TradeStation, whatever. Uh, we provide everything you need. But um, if you do have any questions, I'll put my email in the chat box. And uh, the, of course, the link is acornwealthcorp.com forward slash trade. And uh, I've got to pass it back to Jeanette because I'm a minute or two over. And uh, But it's been an absolute thrill to be part of this. And I really hope you join us because there's nothing better than waking up to green every day. And it's not as hard as you think. Thanks, everybody. And uh, thanks to Jeanette uh, for a wonderful day.